Welcome back to another Canon Chat. Today we'll be talking about Grounded and Gritty versus Fun and Fantastic. All right, Sal, for today's Canon Chat, we're talking about the notion of um, the more grounded or realistic movies um, with the darker tone versus the more fun and, you know, fantasy driven movies with the more colorful tones that we see with the hero movies so i want to start out which preference do you have if you have any um definitely gritty and it might be some bias towards the grittier ones having be dc and the more fantasy ones are marvel um, it could be that, but also I think I like drama, and those grittier ones seem tend to give me the drama that I like in terms of darker and more realistic, um, kind of close to the chest kind of uh, kind of drama there. So I think uh, definitely more gritty is what I like. I would tend to agree with you. I would, if I could cheat, I would go more grounded and fun. Rather than grounded and gritty, I would like to take both of the two worlds. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I guess if gun to my head, I would have to say uh, grounded and gritty. Um, kind of like you said. I mean, not even drama. It just um, it gets closer to real life than uh, some of the other things you look at. It makes you feel like this could happen in the world, or mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Um, so that would have to be my preference. But um, so looking at the movie world in which we've seen examples of both, uh, what do you think is best for movies? Best for movies is um, fun and more uh, fantasy because that draws not only the real fans or like the fans that follow this but it also draws more of the casual fan so okay. in terms of money and for movies and for companies i think they have to go that route and um let's take money out of it okay for this well, so let's talk about storytelling for storytelling w what do you think works best what do i think works best i don't that's that's a very big question i think the fun fantasy works best. Okay. I think it does. Just because comic books at their core are, you know, they, they, motor, you know, they have fun with it for the most part. Whether it's dark and gritty, you're still going to enjoy yourself. But I think that fun is at what, what the core of comic book is. So if we're talking comic books, I think that is, works more for them, for the movies. I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Um, yes, looking at money, casual fans, all that, it's easier to um, connect with comedy and someone having fun uh, rather than something that's dramatic. It might be something that you haven't experienced or, you know, it doesn't grip you as much. Storytelling, I, I do believe it's slightly easier to do grounded. Maybe not gritty so much like i like to focus on ground and gritty and we talk about it because most of the stuff we've seen so far that is grounded quote unquote is darker in tone i still mm. think there's a way you can do grounded without being so dour but um i would think grounded meaning making it as realistic as possible so like we talk about um batman begins in the nolan batman trilogy especially batman begins because that was Nolan's idea of no superpowers, you know, because Batman, of course, doesn't have powers, but his rogue gallery tends to get kind of crazy out there. Yeah, and so even with Ra's al Ghul, the guy lives forever by dipping himself in the Lazarus pit. But in the movie, it was like he only kind of lived forever as an idea. Oh yeah, that people kept following. So that was a way to be grounded, realistic in tone, and I think that's easier because that's what we see every day mm -hmm. I, I would have to say and so you, you can relate to it more yeah and I, I just think you know best for storytelling I think that's easier to 
get that across than kind of what the fantastical world mm -hmm. would give you. So that's just kind of what I think. But um, kind of sticking on that theme, um, do you think that dark tone has to be accompanied with a gritty or with a grounded story? Like we've seen Batman vs Superman, we've seen the Ultimate Cut. Mm -hmm. It's rated R. It's even more violent than before. Um, do you think that is the way you have to do it? So does grounded have to be also gritty? The, yeah. Does it have to be violent? Does it have to be dark, low saturated color? I'm even curious. Do you think that plays more into the negative tone or the negative? reception of grounded stories is it oh it's not enough color for me like mm -hmm. if you brighten up man of steel like it does it change better. the movie <laughs> well that was a big big talking point for fans and for critics and man of steel was he wasn't bright enough and that his suit wasn't the natural red and black or red and blue mm -hmm. um so that in terms of color and stuff i well in terms of color just from uh you know filmmaker's point that does play a role in how you how you receive that movie and how you it kind of makes you feel um now should they always be like that in terms of you know i'm gonna make it as, as gritty as possible so it's gonna affect the way it looks i don't think you always need that and i'll tell you why in a little bit I, we're probably gonna give examples of movies mm -hmm. but um so i don't always think it needs to do that and do i need do i think it needs to be gritty if it's grounded necessarily i don't think it does again i'll give you more examples later but I, yeah, so I'm answering that question. I don't think it necessarily needs to be gritty and violent and rated R just because it's a grounded story. Right. And I'll, I guess I'll jump into the examples if okay. I want to go there. My number one example is Captain America Civil War. And we talk about the double standard with DC and Marvel fanboys, all that. Marvel has a track record. Yeah, I get it. But let's take all that aside. Let's just look at the actual story, the universe we're looking at. Um, Marvel MCU created a more fun, fantastical world where, you know, Tony Stark's a billionaire playboy and he's flying in the suit. He loves it. Yeah, there's parts of being a hero, but for the most part, it's fun. Yeah. And um, so we get to this point in Civil War where now we're talking about ideologies being different. We're talking about someone's parents being murdered by another person's best friend. And so they really turned uh, a corner there. Mm -hmm. In order to tell a Civil War story, you had to go a more grounded way. Now, we still saw the laughs in that movie. I think the laughs were some of the best part. Uh, we saw the color, of course. We saw Spider-Man. Like, you had all that good stuff, but the story you were telling was more ground. It wasn't aliens are invading right now or you know Ultron is kill a robot it's me versus you it's human versus human yeah. we got beef between the way we think about things yeah and so it's a grounded story but it still lived in this fun world it wasn't uh, as fantastical that that movie but it was still fun mm -hmm. yeah uh I could totally agree with that and I think um that Civil War is a great example I think that that kind of you know played the median between exactly what we're talking about here today so in terms of being a perfect comic book story uh, in terms of the feel of it i think it hit it right on the nose um now did i like it as much i don't know that's a different story right that's a different conversation <laughs> go back to our uh, review but um but yeah and and that's a great example but also in terms of you know, being the perfect kind of storytelling was X Men. I think, and the I've first always, one? Said, well, all of them. Um, oh, okay. The X Men World, I should say. Okay. That I think is the middle between Marvel and between DC movies. Um, and I've always thought that. And I think that's why I've always been drawn to it because it it did play that perfect middle. And you know, it's dark, especially the first one. But as they moved on. They got a little bit lighter in tone, especially the newer ones. Um, but that first one was so real. But you could, you, it could have gone just a little bit more to the right, and it could have been exactly like Batman vs Superman. Mm. They could have had a few more darker tones in that, um, in terms of the themes of the story, and you would have had Batman Superman two thousand and one. 
um, but you didn't. They stayed, you know, perfect up the middle, and I think that's why I was drawn to them so much, especially X2. Um, you know, you really grounded the story between or of uh, Wolverine. I thought that was, uh, you know, a great story. They told it, it was dark, but it wasn't over the top. So I think X Men and even the newer ones, they're a little bit lighter um, now, but I, I still think that they played that perfect middle between uh, the two big one, two big companies. Well, I would even go on top of that and say that introducing the new trilogy with the prequels got even not darker but it got heavier because mm -hmm. it's highly political all three movies yeah. and so really digging into the core of the x-men story as you know as it was created is this idea of being persecuted you know um discriminated and being hunted and so mm -hmm. i think those prequels really dove into the political side of it and how that affected and you know like I, we've talked about before with um um first class we talked about the cuban missile crisis and you know country mm -hmm. relations then days of future past we we're talking about you know kind of um mili militant action against the unknown people and then even in apocalypse we talk about cults and yeah. stuff of that nature so it, was, it, it got even more grounded i would even say as it went on with some of the movies definitely um so but yeah i mean so fun like we see marvel i think mcu there's no reason to step aside around that we know that's the shining example but there is a point where it gets it, you know, I think it, of course, the truth is in the middle. It's a balance because there's a point where you get too far left and you end up with some like Batman and Robin or the, you know, the shoemaker. Very Batman. campy. Yeah, where it's way too bright. It's way too colorful. It's way too comic booky. Mm -hmm. And so while we like, yeah, Mar Marvel's fun and they got jokes and it feels like a hero movie. No one was saying about Batman and Robin in those movies. They mm -hmm. weren't praising no, that at all. And so you can get to a point where it's just a little bit too much. And then now adults don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And kids might love it. But <laughs> but at the same time, BVS, even though I loved it and you know we liked it a lot, I did tell you, like, just sitting there where you see little kids in the theater and they're, you know, they're ready to watch Batman and Superman. They're just like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going it's not the Batman and Superman their parents <laughs> grew up knowing, so. Right. And so, I don't know. It, it's tough because my other counter argument, and I, I, it's not a movie per se, but the Daredevil series on mm. Netflix is just out of this world successful yeah and it is a complete 180 from anything marvel does with their movies mm -hmm. so you look at something like that you even look at the ultimate cut of bvs doing so well and you see like really gritty really violent stuff yeah can we say that that can't uh succeed when we've seen examples people really like that yeah, uh, you're, in terms of just being gritty and stuff, you're saying? Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, can we... So you're kind it, of comparing the BBS and the Daredevil. But it, I, I just, my thing is, okay, it's easy for us, a lot of people to say, okay, yeah, Marvel's working, fun and light, fantastic, dark tone, gritty, that doesn't work. But can we really say it doesn't work? Because we've seen some successes. Yeah, no, definitely not. It just in terms of all the other things that go into the movie that make it successful as well so like the storytelling the the casting the editing um you know those play a role too in terms of the reception that the people give it or uh, the reception that the movie gets from people um so i think as long as you have the right formula you can be as gritty as you want and i think that w that is what daredevil shows that if you have the right formula if you have the right people um, that are making this thing happen and you have the right people who are acting in it that you know you can do whatever you want you can go as far as you want to the left or to the right mm -hmm. and as long as you you know you make that those right decisions throughout the movie and before um, that it can be successful no matter what so I think Marvel has shown that they can go both ways and so more in the execution than yeah really I think so 
I okay. think so. All right, Marvel goes both ways. You heard it here. <laughs> uh, all right, so lastly, to wrap this up, um, we've seen uh, the results of BVS. We've talked a lot about moving forward, how we felt the DCU was kind of starting at a bottom point and was going to work its way up anyway. Mm -hmm. But after all the set visits and stuff, DC has made it very intentional. We're going to be a lighter, more fun type deal. Now, the Marvel side didn't like announce anything, but like we said with Civil War, we saw it take a very different turn than we saw before. Yeah. And I, I, people could argue Iron Man 3 was a little bit different, too, because it, it was like post-traumatic stress disorder, basically, and yeah. Tony was freaking out, but it was a lot still... Of terrorism. Yeah, it, it, it was a shame, and then they shame black movie. And then they shafted us at the end, but that's all right. So, but moving forward, my question to you is, do you see a certain trend, like MCU is going to stay light? Uh, DCU is going to be more grounded or do you see them switching or do you think there we're going to move into where well, there's a hybrid in each movie like Civil War mm -hmm. um, I think Marvel has found the key and that key is to use it in moderation um, where for the bigger stories which are upcoming it's Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity Gauntlet Part 2 uh, or Infinity Wars I'm sorry and well it's not even called that yet anymore <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that they found the success in that you can be as gritty as you want as long as you, you know, wield it respectively. Um, and they did that in Civil War, like I said. And um, in terms of DC, it's a little bit harder to read. I know that they, like you just said, they had the reports that they're, you know, making an effort to go a little lighter, especially on Justice League. Um, and we'll see with Suicide Squad how dark that gets. Um, but it's about villains. Yeah, so. it's about villains, so I don't know. But there are a lot of jokes, supposedly, so yeah. we will dark see. Dark comedy. Yeah, a little bit darker. So um, I think right now, though, I don't I don't see anyone changing course too much. Um, you know, that's just not Marvel. That's just not who Marvel is. That's just not who DC is. Uh, Marvel is a little bit more campier, but they can use certain liberties in certain storylines and story arcs that they see fit. DC, um, just naturally grittier. Their their uh, their characters are just, you know, naturally naturally darker. So I don't think that they'll uh, uh, risk trying to do something that they're not naturally good at. Or not naturally good at, but naturally, you know what I mean. See, I disagree a little. Uh, I, I agree. I like the way you put it. Um using the grittier stories in moderation i think that is probably the model for any you know shared universe going forward but I, as i think about it dc is naturally more fantastical you think so maybe not fun per se but fantastical definitely because you're dealing with aliens and gods and you know all this stuff like this fantastic power where everyone in Marvel is pretty much science-based or human-based. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I've always thought that like Marvel is set up to be more grounded. Not gritty all the time. I mean, Daredevil, you've shown you, a little can, bit more you relatable. can go that way. A little but bit more relatable. Yeah, because Tony's a human in a suit. Yeah, you know, you have to have the heart and mind of hero, all that good stuff. But he's a human. Banner's a human. Um, that, you know, had radiation. Uh, Captain America is a human that has some serum. You know, Black Widow is just all human. And so all that. And so it was always set up to be more realistic. But I, I think, like you said, making money, it was easier to relate to a large audience by having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And DC, while well, I think their characters are lent more to like, oh my god, all this super power. More like Shazam, I got all this power. Not like I'm a little kid with it, but it's it's fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's harder to grip that. But somehow, some way, DC decided, no, we're going to. And I like it because it's interesting. It's some we never really saw in the comics. Yeah, well, it makes it re just a good example of that is Man of Steel. We can relate to him a lot more now in right. having his struggles as a human or his human struggles i should say so right. yeah so they kind of tried that and 
Some people like it, some people don't. Right. And so I disagree with that part, but I do agree going forward, movies are going to be that I think we've all realized as fans and studios that the darker stories have to be earned. And a lot of people felt like the MCU has earned the leeway to go into those type of stories. Uh, whereas with DC, a lot of people felt like, no, give us what we're used to and then we can get around to that. Yeah. So I have to agree there. Yeah. All right. So that is our can of chat. If you uh, want more chats, hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for listening.